Okay, first off, thank you so much for the person who was the first reviewer of this podcast. Oh my goodness, the way you made me feel like a million dollars. Like, thank you truly. It meant so much to me. For all of those listening, please go ahead and leave a review on the podcast. Even if you don't write anything, like you just leave the five star, the, well, I don't say I'm not pressuring you being like, leave a five-star review, but whatever, leave your review, um, put the five stars <laughs> and, and that would just, it help people, other women find me, other women build their confidence, live their dream life. And it would mean the world to me. You know, I started this back in January with the mission of being open, sharing my own insecurities, uh, the fact that I struggle so much with anxiety and how I was able to not let that get me down and allow myself to like build my dream life through different strategies, through different ways of like forms of self-care and just build the life that I love to live, a life I'm proud of living, feeling like I'm the best version of myself, continuously glowing up, elevating my life in sustainable, healthy ways. Like I would love every woman to be able to feel comfortable and confident in their own skin, no matter what stage of life they're in. And those reviews genuinely help me find more people or help one more of those women struggling or just who need, you know, a little hawk or walk podcast to find me. So thank you so much. If you could please give me a review if you haven't yet, that would be amazing. We also have a TikTok where I give actually different tips too than the podcast. So if you're craving more of content and short form content too, head on over to the podcast uh, or the TikTok for the podcast, uh, which is at Get Up and Glow Podcast. Uh, and thank you so much. With that being said, let's get back into it. Sometimes it is truly a struggle to feel like the leading woman of your own life. This is your sign to stop holding yourself back out of fear, reclaim your life, do the things you want to do with this one powerful mindset shift. Hi, I'm your podcast host, Madison Haynes. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about how to live your dream life. Now stop holding yourself back out of fear uh, or being anxious about doing things. Do the things that you've always wanted to do and just be like your content dream woman. And how are you going to do this? <laughs> With this one powerful thing called do it for the plot. This has changed my life in the last month completely. It has solved so many of my problems. It is genuinely like three, three therapy. I found it just on a TikTok about the whole concept of do it for the plot. And it has worked wonders on my life in such a short period of time. Before getting into it, I want to talk about the typical ins and outs like I do in every episode of the podcast. Okay, so what is out in my life right now? And that is grocery prices. I am entering into my hosting era. I don't know what happened to me, but I woke up in like the first of June and I was like, I want to learn how to cook and not just like cook for myself, but cook in a way that is really beautiful have a bunch of people over create a relaxing beautiful ambiance like have really nice meals like quality meals and learn how to just do that whole hosting era moment uh, i'm really into homemaking always have been but now i've refined a lot of like the basics of homemaking and that one thing that i haven't really taken that leap on is the whole dinner party hosting abilities and i want to improve that so i've been doing that i've been hosting and i plan to host many more times in june so exciting but with that being said the price of like now Natural ingredients is genuinely in Canada, Ontario, so high. It honestly costs just as much as like to make a really beautiful dinner at home than it does to just like go out and eat it yourself. But like that's not the point. Like I'd rather like I don't know outdoor dining or like going to a nice restaurant is gorgeous. It's nice. It's fun. I think that there's something to be said about learning how to cook and cook in a way that is like showing your love for people. So regardless of the grocery prices, even though they're out, I'm enjoying my hosting era. Okay, and the last thing that is out is just like another life update, and that is a broken washer. Our washing machine broke so sad. It was tragic. We've already experienced a flood from the washing machine, and then a few months later, it is officially broken. So, I mean, we are blessed to have a washer and dryer in our condo, so we don't have to go to a laundry mat, but now we do, and it is not a fun experience. Not only that, but we live in a 700 square foot condo, so the laundry machine is just casually chilling in our combined dining, kitchen, and living room room, which is not very aesthetic, but it is okay. That is why in today's episode, if you're watching on YouTube, I've just strategically placed the camera away so you can't see the gorgeous dryer that is, or the washing machine that is close to me. Okay, ins. I woke up this morning and went to the hair salon. And, you know, I have been, I've been struggling because I loved my long hair. I had hair down to my waist, almost down to my butt, and I grew it for so, so long. I cut my hair pretty short, like shoulder length in early stages of university, and it took me like six, seven years to grow my hair really long. But the problem was it 
as it grew longer, I stopped really going and getting haircuts, like maybe once or twice a year, which is honestly not enough. When they say like you should get a trim every three months, like I'm not going to take that for granted anymore. Uh, my thing was, oh, I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on a haircut every three months. But honestly, I think I'm just going to go to great clips like a few times a month or um, like once or, like a few times a year and then get a really good quality haircut, maybe around the holiday times when I take the most pictures, if that makes sense. With that being said, I went in and be like, I was going to get a little trim, something a little bit different. I want to get that, like those really bad ends because you know, though I loved my hair, I was starting to think like, is it looking raggedy? Like, does this really look good? Like it's like the toss up between an if you guys feel the same way for those of you who have long hair I love the long luscious hair but is it luscious and I've tried to do hair oils I tried so hard to make my hair hydrated but there's only you can sometimes the only cure for split ends is genuinely just cutting them off uh and regardless I went in today thinking oh I'm just gonna get a few inches off but the hairdresser made a little face at my hair not like in a rude way but I could tell <laughs> I read the room and I was like ooh this is not gonna look good for me and he was like I really suggest that you cut it like shorter and like where he put it on my like he put his hand up to my my body and like the, where he was gonna cut it and to be fair you cut it exactly where he said he was um and he did a lovely job but <laughs> From some reason, I didn't realize, oh yeah, my hair, because I'm sitting, right? So when I'm sitting and he puts his hand there, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's not not too much. Oh my goodness, the way when he started cutting, it was so much of my hair. I'm like, this is crazy. Oh my goodness. But again, going up back to today's topic, which I'll touch on momentarily, I was like, you know what? Do it for the plot. It's all about the plot. I'm just, I'm just going to own it. You know, maybe this was meant to be, maybe this is like the thing that I needed. Um, and I was honestly tossing up between cutting my hair a little shorter anyways, to like make it really look more like healthy. And I'm like, I guess this is just going to be the life I lived. So when I like, he finished and I looked at myself in the mirror. I was like, this actually looks good, but not on me. <laughs> that makes sense. Cause I'm so used to having like the long hair. So like, I, of course, like as anyone does after they like, get a haircut that shocks them, they think, Oh my God, thank you so much. I love it. And then they walk away. <laughs> um, and if you don't like, that is great. Like I've never heard, even I've had people get horrible haircuts and they're like, I love it. And then you go home and ball your eyes out like a normal person. I didn't cry because here's the thing. If I saw this haircut on someone else, like if you're watching on YouTube, you can see, I would think, oh wow, like her hair looks really healthy. Like there's a lot of movement to it. Like it's not that short. Like even if I put it up like in a little ponytail, like the lower ponytail I think looks cute. Like it actually looks like nice. I wouldn't think, oh my gosh, it's so short. It looks weird on her. But because it is me and we've talked about like the self-confidence and we've talked about imposter syndrome and everything like that. I went like, oh my God, this does not identify with like my personality. Like I am long hair, beautiful, luscious mermaid girl, not short hair, like corporate, like it doesn't even look like a mom. It just looks fresh. But then I was like, you know what? It's a freaking haircut. And I needed this. Like my hair needed to be healthier. Like that, like, it is better in my opinion to have the shorter hair that looks healthy. It's easier to maintain. That's more luscious than just to hold on to something just because I think it is like good for me or it identifies with me, but it's not actually serving me. And I feel like, like this is so stupid because I'm getting so deep about hair. Um, but like, that's kind of like life. Like sometimes you have to let things go, even though like you think they're really good or you really like them or you're used to them being there. Um, but sometimes like if it's just literally weighing you down in my case sometimes you just have to cut it off and it is different and it takes some time getting used to but sometimes like you just needed that haircut and like that is an analogy for so many things which is so deep but with that being said this is my way of announcing okay I am joining the shorter girls hair club um I am a little freaked out about it it's gonna take some time getting used to I will say my boyfriend loved it I don't know if he was just being the nicest boyfriend ever but he was like I love it it's so nice I like, he's like I feel like I'm dating a whole new woman because we've been dating for four years and I've always had long hair so I'm just gonna rock it and it, I'm entering into my season three which I'll talk on about later era <laughs> another thing that is in and I think it's gonna be helpful to you everyone listening is the stop drop and roll mindset this is something that I just created on my own thinking like you know I am an overthinker I hold myself back from doing the things I want to do or sometimes like I, like I stay the same even though I know that like what's on the other side is gonna be so much better for me but it's gonna take like being uncomfortable or leaping out of my comfort zone to get there so I just like self-sabotage in a lot of instances and I even if it's just something small like for instance like I'm a girly that likes to I'm a to-do list girl I like to do a lot in a day and sometimes I get overwhelmed to the point where I'm stressing out over like my own free time like I have to work out I have to paint I have to cook a beautiful dinner I have to bake uh, the cookies for this weekend blah 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 
and I've learned to stop, drop, and roll. Here is what that concept is. Stop when you're overwhelmed, when you're overthinking, when you catch yourself self-sabotaging, stop and recognize the delusion. Is this thought, is this obsession realistic? Is it really necessary that I have to dust all of the baseboards in my house before a dinner party? No, what's the likelihood that they're really going to look at that? Maybe not so much. Then you were going to drop. So drop the things that you can drop. For instance, if I have to cook dinner, uh, so I'm having a dinner party, I have to grocery shop, I have to clean the house. Uh, let's say those are the two main things on my to-do list. Like just save time. Obviously those have many sub parts, but you know, obviously you need the groceries. Then you clean, wash, like clean the bathroom, clean the kitchen. But what can you drop to make your life easier? Because at the end of the day, your guests want to come to a happy host. A host that's laughing, a host that's smiling, a host that's having fun talking, not a host who's angry, freaking out, stressed out. That's not going to be a fun party. Sometimes in life, it's better to stop. Recognize whatever thought you are having. You guys an anxious thought. It's completely, I apply this to every aspect of my life. Recognize the delusion. Recognize that it's probably not going to happen. And even if it does, probably won't be that bad. Then you drop the thought and roll. Just roll with life. Sometimes things are not that serious. We need to learn as people to let those stresses go. Let those anxious thoughts go. Oh my God, does someone hate my dress? Or, oh my gosh, are my friends going to think my haircut is weird? Stop. Is this delusional? I think it's cool. I'm going to own it. I'm gonna just gonna drop this for my own mental health. I'm gonna roll with it. I'm gonna adopt the new era. That's just an, a, a, one of many examples I could throw it at you. But next time you catch yourself in those like self sabotaging or anxious moments, try the stop, drop, and roll theory. I know it's easier said than done about actually dropping it. Uh, but even just if you tell yourself you're gonna do it and keep trying, it could be just be like um, cognitive behavior therapy eventually, where you're just recognizing at least the fact that it is delusional and you're trying to stop it and you keep this mindset. I don't know. Sometimes like checklists in my head just work for me. Um, but try. Now let's get into the main bulk of the podcast. Why you are all here. What is doing it for the plot? Doing it for the plot essentially means reframing your mindset to allow yourself to do the things you want to do, but you are scared of. If there is something out there, like an event you really want to go to for your favorite influencer, and you don't know anyone that wants to go or is able to go, for instance, and you want to go so badly and you think, oh, I wish I could just be that girl that like is all like all the other girls that just goes around in their fancy outfits and their high heels in Toronto and goes to this gorgeous event, but I can't go to a networking event. I can't do that. I'm too nervous. The idea of traveling on my own, meeting all these people I don't know, trying to network, even trying to talk about my career. That is something I struggle with, like talking about what I actually do. Like all of those things like, are hold, like, holding you back from doing what you want to do. So you don't go and then you stay at home and then you look on Instagram and you see everyone else doing it. And you wish you were like those girls. You wish like you were like the main character. You were like the leading lady, but instead you feel like a support supporting actress, like the friend of the leading woman in the movie where you encourage her, you that's the, like, your, the purpose is to serve everyone else and contribute to everyone else's self growth and watch them get what they want, watch them get the good relationships and the promotions and everything while you sit back and wish you could be the leading lady. Now, this is something I think a lot of us will go through and holding yourself back is something I think every woman struggles with because it is, especially in this day and age where I I genuinely feel like everyone struggles with anxiety. I have an anxiety disorder and that is something that is big with me. Uh, I let this control my life. Uh, I avoid a lot of social settings because I get really uncomfortable. I'm pretty okay where I'm at the point now where I've done a lot of work. I always push myself out of my comfort zone because when I was younger, I was like, I can either keep myself in my room and not live my life or I can go out there and try to push myself with like my comfort zone and like just try and improve it and because I've been in situations where I put myself in front of other people I'm okay with that with that being said I'm 24 and I am unable to do things like that alone I'm able to go with a friend and then I'll be pretty okay even though I feel like sometimes I'm a duck swimming in a lake where it's like I look cool and collective especially because I'll wear outfits like again if you're on YouTube I have a high neck dress so if I go to an event where I know Know that I'm going to be talking to someone or even like something like with a bunch of friends where I can get nervous about saying things I overthink etc going back to my strap drop and roll theory but regardless I will go really red but in particular all over my neck sometimes my arms so whenever I go to an event or an outing like a Christmas party of a for my boyfriend etc I will always make sure to go into my wardrobe which I've 
curate it to have high necks to hide my redness. And just knowing that they can't see me sweat makes me feel a little bit better. But I also feel like a duck swimming in a lake where I look cool, calm, and collected. But under the water, my feet are just rapidly firing, trying to keep myself afloat so I just don't fall or, you know, sink under the water. And then when I get home and I finally can stop like swimming, I'm exhausted. <laughs> that being said, I am a believer that, especially in your 20s, to a certain extent, I don't want to let that define me and get me down and prevent me from living the life that I want to live. And regardless of like what you're experiencing, because I can guarantee you're going through something, you probably feel the same way. Where is you feel overwhelmed, you feel anxious, you look out, out, out the window and you see all these people doing the life and you say, I just want that, but I can't be like that. That's too much for me. It's gonna, It's overwhelming. I honestly believe that sometimes in order to be the leading lady, you just have to take the leap. Uh, so for instance, this do it for the plot thing, I saw it on TikTok where the whole concept is to view your life like a TV show, like your favorite TV show. For instance, I am watching Seinfeld with my boyfriend and we love it. And it's literally the show about nothing. If you watch it, that is literally the pun. It's about nothing. Friends going like about their daily lives and just daily life things that are funny. But what makes Seinfeld so interesting? What makes the show Friends so interesting? The characters are doing normal stuff, but they're so relatable. They fall down. They make mistakes. If, like they get haircuts that are like different. They will go and date a bunch of guys and their relationships turns out horrible and they're heartbroken and they go through it and they like they dye their hair blonde and then they change their, like, you know what I mean? Like just things like that. Like that is what makes a show interesting without the characters going through those plot, the, the plot twists or the like, development, if that makes sense, like watching them grow, the show would just literally be about nothing, but be about nothing in a boring sense. Like the, your favorite character is probably your favorite character because she's relatable and she's imperfect or she does all these things and takes risks like sex in the city. For example, they go out to these events all the time and look what happens. Sometimes there's crazy things. Always there's something crazy that's happening to them or something that is like one character is going through like a, a really hard time. So like, think of your life as a TV show <laughs> in the sense of if you want to go to that event, what would season two of uh, Jerry from Seinfeld or let's say Monica from Friends do? What would she do? Would she stay at home and do nothing? No, she would probably be, I'm so nervous. Oh my goodness. And talking to all the friends in the shows. And then they would say, go, go, go. So she would go and something would probably happen to her but it'd be the character defining moment. That's what makes the show interesting. She comes home, she's proud of herself. It, it, it's for the plot. It makes your life more fulfilling, more interesting, more full. And if no, the characters on shows didn't do those things, like it would be boring. And I'm not saying, oh, your life is boring if you don't push yourself all the time. Like I think to some extent, like if you need to listen to your body and rest, like absolutely rest. But sometimes like I think, do it for the plot. When I'm like, you know what? Should I go sh short? I'm like, you know what? Do it for the plot. Why not? Like life is not that serious. Hair grows back. I'm in my short hair girl hair. I'm in my short hair era right now. And I'm going to embrace that. For instance, I'm going to an, like a, an event, like a networking event on Thursday alone. W groundbreaking for me. This do it for the plot mindset has already changed me so much. I wanted to go to this event. I was so, I am so nervous truly right now, but I'm also excited. And I saw that one girl was like, Hey, I'm going alone. If anyone wants to go with me, like let's meet up when we're there. And I went, looked at her Instagram. She's so amazing. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my goodness. Do I message her? Like how embarrassing is it to be like, I'm alone. Like, please be my friend. So I'm not alone. But I was like, you know what? Do it for the plot. I messaged her. She turns out that she's from my hometown. We went to a school that's literally like conjoining college and universities. We graduated in the same year. We are in the same like type of field of work. And we both have like content creation, like aspirations. And already I can tell when I meet her like we're gonna get along great and like that is for the plot I messaged that girl for the plot I bought that ticket like, even knowing I knew no one I'm gonna go alone and I'm doing it for the plot am I gonna be terrified when I like commute on the TTC alone to this event to meet up with a girl I've never met before which I know is gonna be amazing but it's nerve-wracking and go and network and have to talk about myself in front of all these women who are established gorgeous girlies absolutely but am I going to come out of it better 100% even if something happens where my dress rips in half and I show everyone my butt which is worst case scenario oh god please let that, let that, let that happen uh, or if, if I stumble on my words because I'm anxious and again like with the duck analogy uh, and I, I can't talk or network properly 
meh, at least I've got practice and next time I'll be better. Like, or what happens if I meet someone who also has a podcast, who has a lot of like a bigger reach and wants to, to collaborate? Oh my God, that's the best scenario ever. Or what happens if I just meet a really good friend? Like, or what happens if I just go get a cute picture and have fun, you know, do it for the plot. Don't let things hold you back. Like, don't let your, um, like your, insecurities hold you back from truly living the life you want to live sometimes you have to take the leap as long as it's safe like i'm not saying like go and do whatever if it's like an unsafe situation but like you know like your own limits and sometimes you just have to say do it for the plot you know i am a believer of like not holding yourself back out of fear the one thing that i don't want to have in my life is regret i don't want to look at everyone evolving everyone doing like like just having character development and i have stayed the same as a 30 year old that i am right now at 24 like that is truly my biggest fear like failing sucks and it is hard and it feels horrible and you feel like the biggest imposter in the world but at least when you fail it means you're trying and there's so many people out there and this is something I sometimes struggle with too, of jumping out of your comfort zone because you're afraid of failing or you're afraid of looking stupid or et cetera. Even with this podcast, when I started it, and I still have not shared it with a lot of my friends. And that honestly is because I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of what people are going to think. And I talk about this all the time on my podcast where you don't care what people think. Like be yourself, like embrace who you are, love yourself for who you are at every stage of life. And like, that is something that I also have to get better with because it's kind of like, um, do as I say, not as I do, but I am doing it now. This is the time I came to the revelation with this concept. I took a whole into a whole different realm and I use the phrase do it uh, for the plot as a way to make my anxiety a little less (laughs) intense because at the end of the day, it reminds myself I am anxious. That's not going to go away but I'm doing it for the plot. And what that means is I'm doing it for myself, for the greater good of my own story. That's going to lead me to where I'm supposed to be, like my destiny. And yes, something could go wrong. Yes, this is scary. Yes, I could embarrass myself, but it's for the plot. So what? If I fall on my face and slide in on, a, on a water into a sign, that's a freaking amazing TV show. <laughs> like that, I would laugh at that. Sometimes we need to learn to laugh at ourselves. Sometimes we need to reframe our life, take a step back and look at it from someone else's view. My, I'm again, going back to the hair because it's fresh. I just did it today. So that's why I'm talking about it. Oh my goodness. This is such a big change. Someone else is going to look at me and pro- someone who's never going to see me is just going to think this is who I am. Not even notice the change. A friend that is going to see me is going to be like, oh, cool. It's like, they're not going to think about it, you know, or like it, it's just life is not that serious. Like do it for the plot. Try new things. Wear that shirt you want to wear, but it's a little out there and no one's wearing it right now because it's not trending. Staying comfortable often means like you're not growing. And sometimes it's good to be comfy and have like a few comfy nights. Or sometimes it's okay to recognize that like this is too much for you to handle. But sometimes we need to push ourselves and do the things we actually want to do, but we're holding ourselves back out of fear. Uh, We're going to grow from that. We're going to learn about that so much about ourselves from that. My friend is going to Germany and she, with her boyfriend, but her boyfriend's going for work. And she wants to go and see a bunch of different countries and meet all the friends that she's already had that are international that she's never met before and she's terrified she's terrified of going on to international into international airports alone flying on her own going to strange cities by herself but you know what she's going to come back from that trip being a completely new woman she's going to feel stronger she's going to like even like understand her capabilities and how she was able to do that and like recognizing that you as a person are strong enough to go through that on your own and come out of it on the other side feels amazing yeah is she going to be stressed out probably absolutely is she going to be nervous 100 percent. but she is going to see the world she is going to come back and be so well traveled she is going to be able to say that she did that on her own and like no one can take that away from her and that type of like fear with which is also collaborated with excitement because she wants to do it but she's scared of doing it but she's doing it anyways because she's doing it for the plot and that my friends is what it is all about Okay, so I said a lot about like what it means to do it for the plot, but how, like what are tips to make you feel like the leading lady of your own life? Let's get into it. First off, I'm not going to say make the jump right away. Mm -mm. This was a work in progress for me (laughs) and it took years to just come to this revelation, but I would say start slow. First, start recognizing your own life. Sometimes we forget that, hey, 
we are alive. We're breathing. Like we are human beings. Oh my goodness. Uh, what you have right now, you probably dreamed of at one point in your life. That job you have that you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to wake up on Monday. You were praying, I want a job. I want an internship. I want, think about that. Think about your life as what happens if 13 year old you woke up and looked around. Would she be like, oh my goodness, like this is my life? Absolutely. If 13-year-old me woke up with a condo, with my amazing boyfriend, with my wardrobe filled with pink clothing, even though I'm wearing black right now, (laughs) uh, with a cute little bathroom, a bar cart, all of this like, aesthetic furniture well facebook marketplace but i did it <laughs> it's still aesthetic uh i would go crazy if i found out i work in marketing from home and i had a podcast oh my goodness 13 year old me would be I, I would be so ecstatic with that being said think about it from the other point of view what happens when you're 65 and you are like oh, i when i was 24 i wish i just moved around more or traveled or like Play, learned how to play tennis or like you know you have mobility if you're able to see if you're young you have your youth you have so much opportunity already and it's important to slow down and be like i am appreciative when you're having dinner just like set a can- light a candle set the mood lighting enjoy it romanticize it it is, takes a second to literally light the candle pour the glass of wine and instead of just rushing through your meal to get to the next thing on your to-do list enjoy it, recognize it, take it in your day in, like romanticize your life in that aspect, in that sense. When you're doing your skincare, do the same thing, light a candle or play some relaxing music. Those little changes will help you be more intentional about the life you're currently living in. Because not all of us can, we often can't control our circumstances, but we can control little things like that. And just paying attention to the small moments of our life, like washing your face like doing your makeup that are we often just rush through to get to the next thing even if you do one little thing like putting on a girly youtube video when you're doing your makeup those small things that make life a little bit sweeter like just pay attention to what you're doing slow down and enjoy the new lipstick that you just got enjoy the new dress that you put on shake your hair after getting a haircut like stuff like that like enjoy your life like the little things that's gonna make you feel like the leading lady think about like the intro to every classic movie with like especially the 2000s movies usually it starts with either her in a city her in her apartment you know walking around in a little cute little outfit or like in like cute little sweats um with a ramen noodle box and like chopsticks in her hair they're just she's doing nothing but she's making it in a way that's just so like oh my goodness this is relaxing this is comforting live life like that romance dance around your apartment when you're cleaning play some music enjoy your life like you are the leading lady once you start acting like the leading lady at home it's going to be easier for you to try and act like that in public. Now, how to act like the leading lady in public? Well, obviously you're not going to come off so egotistical being like, I am the leading lady, bow down to me. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is set boundaries. If you don't want to do something, just politely say no. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be like, no. <laughs> but you can say, oh, you know what? Like, I'm going to go like... I actually feel really burnt out right now. Like I would love to, but maybe at a different time. Like learn how to say no politely. Uh, if you want to, uh, instead of like going to your daily Tim's, maybe go to a local coffee shop, try something new, try something different. Like that's how you can get out of your comfort zone slowly and train yourself to step out and do something a little bit different. Instead of buying your flowers at Metro, go to that local little shop. But then you have to go in like, this is like maybe for my anxious girlies, but you have to go and talk to someone new you haven't talked to before. Um, you know, and then you have to look through the, the aisles that are different from what you're used to someone with an anxiety disorder going through into a different setting like even if it's small like a different grocery store can make me spiral uh but i do that to myself purposely and now i'm pretty okay with it because i'm constantly changing my surroundings and i'm feeling more comfortable being able to go with that and that's crazy thinking like oh my goodness i go into a different grocery store and completely disassociate and like i don't even know the aisles i'm in i remember having to call my boyfriend when i first moved into here the city because i moved out of my house and everything changed and i remember just freaking out trying to look for pasta and calling him being like I need you to come in here uh I just start at that moment I was like this needs to change and I've started doing those small things and framed it as like this is me romanticizing my life this is me teaching myself how to be the me uh, the main like the leading lady and not letting like external things that are weighing me down like com- like p- hinder me from living the life I'm supposed to live like from my best life which is what led me to create this podcast because I know that other women probably are struggling just like how, how I was. And I'm telling you, like these little habits have made such a big change in my life. And I am like one of the most happiest. I don't know. I am the most happiest I've ever been. So I, I just wish that for you. So here is your challenge. I like to do little challenges in each episode. So 
to start le- leading like the do it for the plot life or the leading lady life i have two challenges for you number one do an activity that you want to do but you just haven't made time for i want to ride my bike i have a vintage bicycle and i haven't rode it rode it because i'm scared <laughs> of doing it alone in a place i haven't been I'm going to do it the month of June. I'm going to take my bike out. I'm going to go buy a baguette and be extra because I am the leading lady. That's what the leading lady would do. I love bread. I'm going to go buy a little baguette. Maybe go to the little flower shop, a new one. Buy some flowers. Put it in a little basket. Take a little aesthetic photo. I will post it. So follow me on my personal Instagram, which is Madison, M-A-D-I-S-O-N dot Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S. And the Get Up and Glow podcast. We're both on TikTok and on um, Instagram as well. Both of the handles are the same uh except for my own personal ones live uh live life in pink on tiktok with that being said i'm gonna go do that and i'm gonna romanticize the heck out of that moment and i'm gonna love it and i'm gonna be nervous about all of that stuff riding a bike trying to stay afloat because i haven't rode it in forever uh, going on like the back ends of where i've never been never navigated but i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna romanticize it. i'm gonna be the le- reclaim my life i'm going to be a leading lady and to just enjoy my time on earth because life's not serious we're on a floating rock so rather if you want to do that or if you want to even just go treat yourself to a new get like flowers in a new shop or maybe go shopping on your own and treat yourself to a new blouse or maybe like a nice pair of like a lingerie set just for you to make yourself feel gorgeous like not for someone else like do something out of the ordinary even if it's a solo picnic when you read and like make yourself a sandwich at the park that's free you can do that do something that is alone that pushes you outside of your comfort zone slightly but in a way that's relaxing that makes you feel like you have that movie moment like cue whatever like song it's going to be in the background of your movie like have that relaxing moment where you're like this is the intro to my my own season like my own movie or my own tv show enter season two of you season you're in season one now and you're amazing you're doing great but at every aspect of our life we want to continue we, we want to be like Grey's Anatomy where we have endless amounts of seasons you know continuously growing continuously glowing up continuously becoming better not in a way where you're hustling and like putting pressure on yourself but in a way that is natural in a way that you are just learning as a human being growing in your self-confidence so you can truly flour- flourish at every season of life okay challenge number two i know you have something that you want to do but you're holding yourself back what is on your bucket list you know what is on your 2023 goals i wanted to meet a new friend that, that's hard i'm like how am i gonna meet a new friend i've already met two new friends with this mindset two new friends and i'm an anxious socially awkward girly too whatever you want to do next time it comes in your way there's an event there's a party there is you want to uh, I don't know, like dye your eyebrows pink. Okay. Maybe don't do that. But like, well, if you want to, but whatever, like, whatever you want to do that you're like, Ooh, I want to do this because it's so different. Like I'm worried what people are going to think. Do it. Just do it for the plot. Cut your hair short. If you think, Oh, you know, I'm done with this. Do it for the plot. Go to that event and network. And even if you're nervous, do it for the plot. The, what, the worst thing that could go wrong is you embarrass yourself. And that's a heck of a TV episode. The best thing that could go is like whatever the, the opportunity does not exist, the limit does not exist. And that's also a killer episode. Do that. Try it next time. Something when the opportunity presents itself and you want to go, but in your head, you were like, I don't think I'm good enough. I am oof. <laughs> in your head when you think, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I can do this. I am terrified. Everyone else looks better than me. They're prettier than me. They're smarter than me. They have better careers than I do. They have more expert- expertise. They're better swimmers or better runners, whatever the scenario, just do it for the plot. Even if you're the worst one there and you think so, you're not. But even if you think like you have the biggest imposter syndrome, just go do it for the plot, live your life. Because what happens if you died tomorrow? Like, God forbid, let's not have that happen. But you never know what happens. I want to live every single day in the most authentic way possible. I want to enjoy my life and I'm not going to let my thoughts hold me back anymore. I made this decision a while ago and I was like, I'm an anxious girl and I'm going to be anxious. I can't control that, but I can control that it doesn't control me. I can recognize my feelings and thoughts and work on ways continuously that's going to allow myself to still live the life that I see other women like living and want. And I was able at 24 to have a job I love, to be able to have opportunities to do things. I have won so many things just from networking or putting myself out there. I won beautiful concert tickets or an amazing hotel stay. I have a great boyfriend that makes me happy. I have met so many friends of amazing, strong, smart women who just build me up and are genuinely like so like 
comforting and supportive and like like us all the beautiful amazing group of friends on a tv series and i was able to create the life of my dreams genuinely by this mindset by doing these these actions and do i have my bad days oh absolutely do i feel overwhelmed and burned out 100 percent. but you know what at least i can say like i feel like everyone everyone has bad days everyone you know goes through things and i'm not saying my life is perfect by any means like everyone is dealing with their own shit sorry for my language <laughs> but at least i am owning like owning myself at least when those things happen i don't let it control my entire life i don't let it continuously get me down like like that song like when I get knocked down I get up again Uh, with that being said I'm going to end today's episode I could talk about this forever uh but if you made it to the end please go ahead and rate this podcast we have our first rating and for the person who did that oh my goodness the way I cried like from happiness thank you truly Okay. Thank you so much for listening. As if you could, again, leave a review for this podcast. If you liked it, it would mean the world to me. If you put your name next to your review too, or your Instagram handle, just let me know like what social you're putting. I will personally follow you because if you're like, or if you're a girly who comes back and is listening to me on a weekly basis, like that would make my dreams come true (laughs) and I would love to know that there's women out there because I with my own podcast when something pops up I will listen right away I'm like oh my goodness like busy blooming or whatever and if someone out there is doing that for the get up and glow podcast oh my goodness you would like literally make my dream come true so please leave your at and I would personally follow you (laughs) and and like you know I will support you I will like your pics I'll be like yes girly like glow up get it get it whatever you look great um and let's be friends because I genuinely would like to be friends with each and every one of you if you have something you're going through dm me madison.haynes on instagram if you have a podcast that you would like me to film do the same thing girly I will do it I am here for you I am for the people <laughs> um with that being said thank you so much for listening I hope you feel like the leading lady of your own life because you are you 100% are and start not letting yourself hold yourself back do things for the plot as long as they are safe and sustainable and enjoy your life because you are already that girl and with that being said thank you so much for listening to this episode and until then bye